So I've had an idea for a potential new series and I think I'm going to call it Adrian Attempts, uh, a bit like a musical version of Duncan Dare's in the 80s. Does that mean anything to anybody? No? Let's move swiftly on then. So the basic idea is that I want to look at things which are perhaps a little bit outside of my normal musical comfort zone and I want to look at things that perhaps I find difficult or challenging and look at artists and styles which I don't normally look at and sometimes when I'm making these YouTube videos I feel there's a little bit of pressure on me to totally nail whatever song or artist it is that I'm looking at and uh, we get inside and inhabit their style and of course that's not always going to be possible. Now I want these videos to be quite loose and relaxed and exploratory and I think it's going to be as much about my own learning process with this stuff as it is about me saying this is how it should be done and I'm sure I'm going to get stuff slightly wrong, there are going to be mistakes but um, I think that's going to be a good thing. I want to kick this series off by taking a look at the playing of the legendary Wilco Johnson and he's certainly a player who's got a unique sound and a unique approach to the instrument technically and I have attempted to play one or two of his things in the past but I've failed pretty miserably so today I'm going to have another try and for those of you who don't know Wilco Johnson, he is a British guitar player famous for being in the band Dr Feelgood in the 70s and uh, they're a band from Canvey Island in Essex, often described as a pub rock band but really they're just a rock and roll band, made some really exciting records in the 70s and they're a very influential band, they were a big influence on bands that came after them, punk bands, post-punk bands I know that Andy Gill from Gang of Four has said that Wilco Johnson was one of the main influences on his playing. And really, whenever you hear a kind of indie band that's got this kind of choppy, aggressive guitar style, it always makes me think of Wilco Johnson. So the format is going to be this. I'm going to start by talking generally about the Wilco Johnson sound and style and explore some of his basic techniques. Then I'm going to try and play four or five of his best known riffs. So let's get started. By way of preparation for the making of this video, I basically spent most of yesterday in Wilco Johnson land and I did a lot of listening. I revisited the three albums that he did with Dr. Feelgood in the 70s and they still all sound really great. And then I went on a massive trawl through YouTube, watching loads of Wilco YouTube videos, lots of live footage. There are many great live performances from the 70s that you can see. And I also checked out a number of Wilco Johnson guitar lessons, many of which are actually done by the man himself. He seems to have given a number of interviews where he's talking in a bit of detail about his guitar style and the kind of techniques that he employs and he demonstrates some of the riffs so that's actually been really helpful for me as a starting point and as a way into his style but as I quickly discovered even if you've got the man himself giving you a lesson and taking you through what he's doing it's still very very hard to get it right and he's one of those players where you listen to his style and it seems fairly straightforward and in these interviews he's very charming and quite self-deprecating and he says yeah my style's really simple I've basically got one or two tricks and uh, you know, I got everything from uh, Mick Green from the Pirates and uh, he's being a little bit disingenuous I think there because as soon as you start trying to look into his style there's a lot more going on than uh, meets the eye. His approach I think is unique in both his hands so in his strumming hand and his fretting hand and it might be good I think just to break it down into those two components and the most striking thing about his playing when you look at him playing live is his strumming hand and uh, he doesn't use a pick and I'm going to try and not use a pick today and you could play some of his stuff with a pick I think and kind of fake your way through it but I don't think you quite get the same vibe unless you play with your fingers like Wilco does and one of the important components of his style seems to be this continuous motion that he's got with his strumming hand and he's basically just keeping this hand moving all the time and then using the fretting hand to squeeze down chord shapes and to play riffs and to get that kind of choppy sound so my starting point was just to get a feel for his strumming technique and what I did was just lay my left hand flat across the strings just so that they're all muted and then try and get this down up kind of motion and he seems to be playing with his nails of his strumming hand and I was scrutinizing the video footage quite closely to see exactly how he did it and it's with the downstrokes I think he's striking the strings with his fingernails on his strumming hand and uh, I wasn't quite sure which finger he was using I mean you could do it with, you know, with any
any of the fingers or with all of them. And then I did come across one video where he talks about uh, using all of those fingernails and just kind of hitting the strings together like that for the, the downstroke. And uh, just kind of using his forearm, there's a bit of finger movement in there as well. He's kind of flicking his, his fingers out to get a little bit more power into that downstroke. And then for the upstroke, to start with, I thought it was just kind of coming back up with the fingers. Uh, but that doesn't quite sound right because you get that nice strong attack with the fingernails on the downstroke. And then you know, coming up, you've got more of the fleshy part of your finger, so you don't get much attack on the upstroke. So I think what he's doing is on the upstroke, he's probably hitting the strings with a bit of the thumbnail as well. So it's, it's, it's fingers on the way down and then thumb on the way up. So. Um, and that feels a little bit awkward to me already. So I'm just gonna spend a bit of time just doing that, I think, just to get used to that technique, making sure it's really solid. I and mean, one of the things you notice on the recordings and on the live footage is how tight and how you know, groovy his playing is. So you wanna be really confident with that basic strumming technique I think before you start getting into all of the fretting hand stuff. So just muting the strings, just get a nice strong solid down up stroke. And uh, another thing I noticed is that in some of the 70s videos he's actually using all down strokes. So kind of thing as well. So that I find even more difficult, particularly at a fast tempo, to get all those down strokes in there. So I think for this video I'm mostly going to be sticking with the down up kind of technique. Moving on to the fretting hand and Wilco has a very specific set of shapes and chord voicings that he uses and you really have to do it Wilco's way if you want to get his sound. So let's do this based off of a G major chord here and he doesn't do this, he doesn't play a bar chord like that where you've got the first finger all the way across the strings. When he's playing a G chord he plays it like this so we've got the thumb over the top playing that root note and the fifth string is, is muted, you can mute that with the thumb or the, the tip of your third finger uh, and then we've got fret five on the D string, four on the G and fret three on the top two strings. So that's that's our G major chord voicing uh, that Wilco uses. And then he will just move that chord voicing around. So if you're in the key of G, you've got, you've got your one chord, your five chord, uh, your four chord rather is, is C, and then your five chord is D. So that's his shape. And he's just squeezing that chord down when he needs it. So if you've got your muted strumming going on here, then you can just, squeeze that chord down and the rest of the time you've got those muted strums. So that might be a good exercise just to get started with this, just squeezing down that chord shape and then releasing it. And the challenge here I think is the muting. You want to try and keep things reasonably clean. So when you're not pressing down that chord shape, you want to be able to strike all of the strings with your strumming hand and not have any stray notes coming through. So you just want to be just release pressure but only just enough to mute the strings and you also want to make sure that that fifth string isn't allowed to ring out so playing around with that to start with just as a little exercise will be a good way to, to get started with this kind of style. Those are the basics I think of his left and right hand techniques and then often what he tends to do is play little riffs and licks around the chords and that's how he arrives at this rhythm and lead guitar at the same time kind of a sound. So he's got his basic chord shape and then around that you've got some little riffs that you can play, really just based on the, the pentatonic shape 
that, that lives in the same position as the chord. So if you're playing a, a G chord or a G minor chord, you've got your minor pentatonic scale there and you've got all of those kind of rock and roll licks that you can play around the chord shape. But again, the key thing is just keeping this strumming hand moving and getting that kind of thing happening. Riff number one, Rock Set, is on the first Dr. Feelgood album down by the jetty and I thought this one would be a good one to start with. It doesn't seem that complex, it's not played very fast so let's see how we get on with this one. Now the essence of the riff is quite simple, we've got this, this little three note melody, you can see this is coming from the minor pentatonic scale and then we've got this chord accent on top. So this is all coming out of that same G chord shape sort of played the Wilco way and we start by playing the, the little melody there. So it's a, it's a D, an F and a G. I think the F is played together with this B flat. I can kind of hear that note in there as well. So and then on an upbeat we've got this kind of chordal stab and that's just the top part of the the uh, the G chord shape and it, it might be the entire chord shape played there actually it could just about detect that low uh, low G note in there so we've got that basic idea now of course the hard thing is combining it with the Wilco strumming hand technique so kind of idea that the difficulty is just the muting I think so you want to be hitting all of the strings quite aggressively but particularly on that single note part you just want the the main notes to come through you don't want any unwanted string noise so hitting that first D note there I want to be muting all of the other strings so I'm, I'm touching the low E string with my thumb I'm using my other fingers just to, to rest on the higher string so just got that D note coming through that double stop there and then a single G note and it's I think the difficulty is finding the right balance between tightness and, and messiness I mean it's not flawlessly played when you hear Wilco do it but it is played very very tight to the bass and drum it's got a real kind of groove to it and it's not totally messy um, and there's no kind of unwanted notes coming through as, as well so it's just finding that balance I think is, is quite tricky. Um, let me just see if I can add in this chordal stab on top. So we've got so I'm just having to move my first and second fingers over to catch that G triad shape on top. feeling a little bit awkward but that's, that's starting to come together I think and then you can just take it round the the chords it's really a 12 bar blues so you can go up to the four chord same riff back to the one and then for the five chord I don't think he you could play the, the, the riff up here at the tenth I don't think he does that on the record he seems to be just going to a fifth string root D chord shape like that which then goes down to a C chord so you've got the five going to the four um, and then back to the main riff so let me do my best attempt at putting all of that together um, I'm going to get some overdrive on as far as the gear that I'm using today, Wilco is famous for using his Telecaster, he sometimes uses a Strat as well, so you want that kind of guitar, something that's got that quite bright tone which is going to really cut through. So I've got my 52 reissue Tele, going into my Fender Princeton which is again set quite bright, 
Uh, I've got a bit of overdrive as well. I'm using my, my Rat pedal for a bit of overdrive. The tone on that first Dr. Feelgood album is actually quite overdriven. And it's quite a unique sound. Um, I'm not sure what amp he used. I think I read somewhere that it's an HH amp of some kind. One of these old British amp brands which have kind of gone quite out of fashion these days but it's got quite a unique sound to it a unique kind of overdrive tone I, I can't quite match that but I auditioned a bunch of different overdrive pedals and the rat seemed to get me closest so let me switch that on <laughs> So that's my best attempt at rock set and already my fingers are starting to hurt and the, the bit above the fingernail is starting to look a little bit so hope we're not going to actually see any blood in this video. Actually one of the reasons that uh, Wilco had the red scratch plate on his Telecaster apparently was so you, you couldn't see the, the blood spatters which uh, came about when he was playing particularly aggressively. Let's attempt another riff. How about keep it out of sight? This is again from the Down by the Jetty album. And this one is in the key of B minor. And uh, there's actually one really good video where you've got some very clear live footage of him playing this. And what he's doing is he's using his same chord grip. So we have the G major down here. We're moving that chord up to the seventh position and we're making it a minor chord. So we've got the first finger just covering the, the top three strings. We've got that B minor sound. You've got the B, you're again muting the A string, another B. You've got a D, you've got the F sharp, and then you've got a B on top. And it's quite similar to the first riffs to, to, to rock set. We've got a a combination of chord stabs with a simple kind of pentatonic melody. So exactly like uh, the rock set riff actually you got this time it's an F sharp a and a B and then going between that B note and this stab on the chord so that's the basic sound that you're going for but again the tricky thing is going to be getting that happening with the strumming hand and in that live video I'll put a link to the live video on screen he actually seems to be playing it all with downstrokes and there's a little bit of a discrepancy between the way that he plays it in the 70s and then the way that he tends to play some of these songs these days I mean these days he's often using this down up motion in the 70s with some of those songs he's playing with all down strokes so I'm going to try and do this both ways. So with, with downstrokes, if I try this slowly to start with, it would be, be something like this. And uh, you can try it with the down ups as well, see if that works. Both of them sound good, they, they do sound a little bit different, but um, it's, it's worth trying both of those approaches and seeing what you feel most comfortable with. Um, so that's really the song, it's that main riff, and then there's a little chorus section where it's just going to these kind of A form bar chord shapes, so D and E and an F sharp. So let me try and put all of that together with a bit of distortion.
another chord there at the end which I should probably show you and it's this it's an F sharp seventh chord and the way that Wilco is doing it is quite unusual I think we've got the the root note here F sharp A sharp and then an E note and at first I thought it was just this kind of bluesy ninth chord shape where you're just flattening your third finger over the top strings and I am hearing that high C sharp but I'm not hearing this G sharp in there so I think the way that Wilco does it is he's actually muting the B string using fingers two one three muting the B and then you've got your little finger on the top string it's got quite a distinctive sound to it so if you want to do it the Wilco way I think that's that's the chord shape to use so. Let's move on to what is perhaps the best known Wilco riff, She Does It Right. And this is a very hard one for me to get right. I do find this one tricky. And we're back in the key of G for this one. It's based off of that same G chord grip. And again, it's a familiar combination of chord accents and then a little, little pentatonic kind of riff or melody. So we've got these little chord hits on the G. And the little riff is just a bend at the fifth fret on the third string, bending the C up to a D, bringing the bend down, coming down to the B flat, and then G. So if we try and do this in combination with the strumming hand, which is just moving down and up the whole way, one thing that I noticed when listening to the recording closely is that this G note is ringing pretty much throughout the riff so you want to keep that note squeezed down and that for me is something that's quite hard to do I think when I release pressure on this chord shape my thumb is working with my fingers but you actually want to release pressure just with the fingers and keep that thumb note down so that might be something to, to practice separately from the rest of the tune I think so holding down the G note with the thumb. I want the rest of the strings to be muted. So and then I'm going to squeeze down just the top part of that chord. So something along those lines and the rhythm here is one and two so squeezing down the top part of the chord on beats two and three. So it's something like that. Now let me try and bring in the, the little single note riff there. And once again, you just want those single notes to come through. So you want to be muting any of the surrounding strings so and then you've got one more chord accent at the end of the phrase come together now so that's the basic riff then we take it through the one four five chord progression so moving it up to the eighth position same kind of riff and I think the accents might change slightly once the the singing starts we've got this same seventh chord shape that I just mentioned but this time it's a D7 going down to a, a C7 so keeping that second string muted
So that's my best effort at that particular riff. I'm just going to turn on the overdrive and put all of that together properly. <laughs> think that one's sounding quite perfect it's kind of hard to control that low G note it seems to be droning away a bit too prominently there so there, there might be some way that I can just dial that droning note back a little bit and emphasize those choppy chords a bit more but that's something for me to practice let's take a look at the riff from all through the city this is another great riff and we're in the key of A for this one but it's based off of our same chord shape so here we are at the, the fifth fret and the riff starts off with some chordal accents, so... And we've got that A shape and just moving it down one fret, so A flat and then back up to A again. And then we've got a chromatic run of notes on the fifth string, so it's fret four, five, six and seven. And I think from video footage, Wilco seems to play this with all four fingers. So fingers one, two, three, and four. You could go one, two, three, and then back into position using three for that last note. And if you put that together with the chord part, the strumming hand is once again just down and up all the way through this part. So. Keeping those chord hits nice and sharp, like with the previous riff, I'm hearing that A note droning throughout most of this. So you're keeping the thumb pressed down but releasing pressure with the fingers. Then for the, the chorus or the refrain of the tune, we're once again going to these seventh chord shapes. So this time it's an E7 going down to a D7. So So that one's starting to happen, I think. And just through making this video, I've not really practiced any of these riffs prior to making this video, but just the process of making it starting to get a little bit more comfortable with the Wilco style. So I imagine with a little bit more practice, give it a few days and it should start to feel pretty good. But let me put that together with a bit of overdrive. <laughs> saved the most challenging riff for me at least until last this is the riff from going back home and there's lots of good footage of Wilco playing this so you can see exactly what he's doing but it doesn't make it any easier to play and it's all based off of this chord shape here which is a, a type of a power chord I suppose we've got open fifth string and then two on the D and G and then with the little finger I've got five on the B and E. So it's a great sounding chord, but it is a bit of a stretch. It's kind of a power chord sound. And at the same time as fretting that, we've got this bass line melody going on. And uh, apparently Wilco stole this riff or borrowed it from Mick Green. And uh, Mick Green 
actually gets a, a writing credit on this song and uh, he actually taught Wilco to play this, this particular riff. And the way that we combine this chord shape and that melody is, is to play that bass note there with the thumb over the top, which is something that personally I find pretty challenging because to be able to do that stretch, I have to open up my hand and bring my thumb round behind the neck and then to, to bring my thumb over the top. I mean, my hand naturally wants to, to close up as soon as I put my hand in that kind of position. So I'm kind of fighting against myself to get this riff to sound clean. So this is my best attempt at it. We've got... just about get that but it is a bit of a, a struggle to get that thumb over the top and what I'm doing halfway through the riff is I'm just taking my my little finger off momentarily which I think is, is what Wilco does so so there I'm just releasing the little finger thing that I'm hearing is this pull-off idea on the A string and it's a nice little variation if you want to throw that in there. I think I'm hearing that on the original recording. Wilco doesn't always seem to do it on the live footage that I've seen but it's nice to have it there as another option. So that would go like this. We've got some... Um so just that pull off from four to three and then the open A string and then that low F sharp. So you can throw that in every time or just when you feel like it as a little variation. So that's the main riff. When the verse starts, when the singing comes in, it's slightly simplified. I think it's then something like this. goes to the four chord which is a D chord and Wilco's playing something along these lines. So based off of a D chord shape and then we've got so three to four on the D string and then I'm hearing a, a pull off or a double pull off to the open string and then two I think on the A string. It might be might be three, I think it's probably two. Um, then we're back to the one chord riff again. And then for the, the chorus we've got um, just E to D. got a C and then just dropping the bass note down to a B. And back to the main riff again. So it's sounding a little bit rough at the moment. I am struggling slightly with with that but uh, give it a bit of practice. I'll probably be able to just about pull that off I think. Uh, but let me give you my best attempt at putting all of that together with a bit of overdrive.
there we go. That's my best attempt at five of these classic Wilco Johnson riffs. And I know that I didn't quite nail every single one of them, but really that's the point of this series. It's me exploring his style. But I think by the end of this video, I'm starting to get more comfortable with what's going on. I'm probably going to keep practicing these riffs and they'll probably improve a little bit over time. So let me know what you think of this whole Adrian attempt format and whether it's worth sticking with. And perhaps you've got some outlandish suggestions for things that I could attempt next. So do let me know if that's the case. Thanks for watching. I will be tabbing all of these riffs out and I'll put those up on my Patreon page and I'll see you next time.